Pori Care for new moms and their babies, I frequently get the question, when can I give my baby a, a bath and how? This seems to be an area of major concern when it comes to bringing home baby. Before discharge, new parents and family members should be taught the proper method of bathing a newborn and safety measures to follow. When new par parents can confidently say that they've never taken a parenting class and have no idea the proper procedure of bathing a newborn, it's definitely time for an intervention. Educating people on the proper method of bathing can lead to safer outcomes. Today we will go over the proper method of giving an infant a bath in a step-by-step -step manner as well as learn proper safety tips to prevent injury. When it comes to bathing a newborn, the order in which you clean is the same as when you clean yourself. You usually start from the cleanest part and work down to the dirtiest area. And we'll start with the baby's head and neck. However, according to a 2005 article called Cleansing and Caring for the Skin of Neonates by Elena Blinko, states that the baby's eye, ear, and nose areas should be left untouched. First, we're going to start with cleaning the eyes with water only. You're going to work from the inner corner of the eye to the outer corner of the eye using a different part of the cloth for each eye. Next, you'll wash the baby's face again with water only using a soft cloth. Next, you can wash the baby's hair. According to Anne Hamilton in the Good Beginnings book, you only need to wash the baby's hair three times per week. Finally, You'll wash the baby's neck with soap and water, making sure to get all the creases and neck folds. After the baby's head and neck are cleansed, you'll move down to the chest, back, and arms. Many doctors and nurses recommend waiting until the umbilical cord has falling off, fallen off before you submerge the baby in the bathtub. And according to a 2009 article on bathing and cleansing newborns by C. Joe Medi, a study was done on 102 mother-baby couplets who were randomly assigned either giving their baby a tub bath or a sponge bath, and no differences in cord healing were recorded. See, Joe Medi also stated that a safe water temperature for a newborn is somewhere between 34 and 36 degrees Celsius. Once the water temperature is right, it's time to put the newborn in the tub or other bathing device. You'll now start washing baby's chest with soap and water. You can use a soft cloth or just your hands for this step and the rest of the bath. Make sure you rinse the baby's chest well before moving on to the next step. Once the chest is washed, you can move on to the arms. Make sure you cleanse the shoulders and under the baby's arms well, paying close attention to creases and folds. You're gonna wash each arm, including the hands and fingers. Finally, for this section, you can flip the baby over, supporting his head and chest with one hand and washing his back with the other. The third section of the bath includes the legs and bottom area. First, you'll wash each leg with soap and water, including the feet. The final step of the bath is washing the baby's bottom. If you're bathing a girl, you wash her from front to back only. Make sure you don't wash the opposite direction to be sure you don't introduce any organisms into the urinary or vaginal tract that shouldn't be there. If you're bathing a boy, you'll cleanse his penis first. According to a 2009 article, Circumcision Care, by author C. Kindred, if the baby has been circumcised, you won't use soap on the penis at all, just warm water. And then after that, you'll wash his bottom with soap and water. Lastly, you don't need to dry the baby vigorously, just wrapping the baby in a soft towel and drying his hair before you get him redressed is sufficient. This final step is important in preventing a temperature drop. Today I've educated you on how to give a newborn a bath, as well as presented you with some research by experts in this field and their recommendations on certain topics discussed. Learning how to properly give an infant a bath in a step-by-step -step fashion also often leaves parents and caregivers with a sense of security when it comes to giving that very first bath after they're discharged from the hospital. I've also found that parents like to see the bath demonstrated as opposed to just spoken to them because it's easier for them to remember the process. 
You now know how to properly cleanse your baby from head to toe and everything in between. I hope this instruction gives you the confidence you need for that very first bath. Maybe next time you'll be the pro and be able to demonstrate to a new parent giving an infant a bath for the very first time.